11 things you didn't know about Avatar. Want to know every nitty gritty detail about how Avatar was made? Look no further than Avatar Extended Collector's Edition Blu-ray out November 16. The disc has three versions of the movie, including one with 16 extra minutes of footage. It also contains a master class that shows the film in three stages of production, performance capture, template and final. Director James Cameron, producer John Landau and the movie's crew, walk popular mechanics through the process of making the film. Here are just a few things you'll learn from the new. 1. Sound artists used real life, animal sounds for Pandora's beasts. Skywalker Sound was responsible for crafting not only the ambient noise of Pandora, but also its many strange creatures. A lot of the mandates that we got from Jim were specific sounds for specific creatures, says Juan Peralta, who heads up post-production sound at Skywalker and worked closely with Avatar's sound designer, Christopher Boyce. He wanted three vocalizations for the viper wolf, a six-legged, dog-like creature, one for stalking their prey, another when they're chasing the prey, so that they can call to other viper wolves for help, and a third during attack. The viper wolf vocalizations came from hyenas and coyotes. Much of Pandora's ambient sound came from recordings taken in Costa Rica and Africa. The sound was originally mixed in 5.1, which will be preserved on the Blu-ray. 2. Every Na'avi costume was built in real life. The Na'avi never existed outside the virtual world, but their clothes were a different story. By the time I came into the project, it was pretty well established what the world would be and the people would be says costume designer, Deborah Scott, who also worked on Back to the Future, E.T and Titanic. It was just sort of a blank space on how the costumes were going to be accomplished. Though the garment designs were simple, they incorporated many different fabrics and textiles. The animators really needed to have an actual 3D textured piece to make it look as real as it looks in the movie, because of the nature of the design and the complicated weavings and the textures of the beads and feathers Scott says. Making the costumes in real life also gave animators a reference for how feathers would blow in the wind. Even though the garments are simple, there's a lot of movement in them, Scott says. 3. James Horner invented many of the instruments used in the movie's score. Composer James Horner was faced with an interesting challenge when crafting Avatar's score, it had to incorporate instruments that weren't familiar. It's amazing how many sounds sound like instruments from other countries, Horner says. I add make a sound and even though it was made, especially for the film, it sounded like something you might have heard, like some Iranian instrument, Horner says. And I would find a flute that sounded lovely, but it sounded like a Chinese flute or some weird bagpipe from the Scandinavian countries. Horner ended up creating most of the instrument's sounds on the computer. They were then played through keyboards, percussion and wind instruments. We had to create a whole world of sounds that Jim would buy off on, Horner says. 4. Cars factored into Cameron's creature design. When they got together at his house in May 2005, Cameron relayed a thought about Pandora's Beasts to lead creature designer, Neville Page, Racing Stripes. We started to develop this notion of using automotive lines and form language in the creatures, Page says. That form can be seen particularly in the Banshee, it actually has a through line that runs from its chin through its zygomatic arch down its jugular, through its body and ends at the tip of the tail, Page says. And that was an extremely helpful cue to develop the creatures, particularly, the ones that would be aerodynamic. 5. Cameron used two different 3D camera rigs to shoot Avatar. Cameron and collaborator Vincent Pace have been working to develop quality 3D camera technology for years. Some of the techniques that he used for 2D couldn't be compromised, steady cam, handheld Pace says of that process. Anything that he wanted to do and accomplish in 2D would be the same if he was going to introduce 3D. 
the first rig they developed used Sony F950 cameras and mimic human eyes, two lenses, side by side, held in a static position, approximately, two inches apart. The problem with that system is that as you get closer to it, you're starting to see more in one eye because of the proximity pace says. Taken to the extreme, for instance, you can only see my finger in one lens and not in the other. The duo developed a beam minus split array that allowed the lenses of two cameras to overlap each other and create dynamic interocular distance. Now I'm not restricted by my interocular distance pace says. In fact, I can bring it all the way down to zero if I want to by making the adjustment camera and use this more advanced system to shoot about 80% of the film. The first rig was used about 20% of the time pace says that percentage is reversed when the rigs are used to film. 6. Visual effects artists used a facial mold with holes in it to place the green dots on the actors' faces. In order to track the actors' facial movements, which they would later use to turn the actors into their Navi, counterparts' avatars' visual effects department needed to place green dots along the primary facial muscles, which were us? captured by a unique camera rig it's that sat a few fantasy. inches from the actors' faces. If you want As to the live actor here, delivered you have dialogue to or emoted in Let's some way, it. we could track the position of the dots from frame to frame, says senior VFX supervisor Joe Lepari. We could understand, in solving algorithms, how those should apply to virtual armature in Napieri's face. So we're taking Zoe Saldana's facial performance and mapping it onto Napieri's model. But rather than applying the dots painstakingly by hand, we used masks of the actors' faces that had holes forward where the dots needed to be. Every morning Zoe would come in and the ash was mask on her face says Steven Rosenbaum, visual effects supervisor at Weta Digital, created the effect. In just 10 minutes, we could block the dots there and paint her up and send her on the stage in addition to saving the production tons of time. The mask made me paint the dots over the course of the day much easier. Seven. In the climactic Banshee flight sequence, the choir is singing in Nawabi. Paul Frommer, who created the Nawabi language, wrote words about flight for Horner to use in the sequence where Jake sings a Banshee and takes it for a ride. Not any prose, not any Nawabi poetry, Horner says. They're all to do with flight and race and air and wind, but there's no continuity to it. I just use them abstractly, like painting. Paul wrote about an extra 60 words for me for this sequence. Why did you come to us? Navavi was Came influenced by Amharic, Persian, and Chinese, other among Skype other people. languages. It Paul is hard to first fill up the call to create a full. language for Avatar in 2005. It's Trust been me. pandemonium ever since that the most linguistic no professor who what based I? the sound of the language on adjectives. They're kind I of talking sounds, he says. There are three of them in Navi. A warrior of the Jarhead clan. Languages, Sam Siupak? Like the national language of Ethiopia. Navi also contains sounds found in certain indigenous languages of America and Central Asia. Certain languages that by coincidence I happen to be familiar with influence the language in various ways from her sense. There's something grammatically that looks a little bit like Persian, something that looks a little bit like Chinese or Hebrew or Indonesian. But the combination it is, is decided. Right now, there are one My daughter will teach you our ways. Learn by well. Comparison has Je nearly 40,000. Then we will see if you're in sanity. All the time, and and fans are even teaching themselves to speak and write in Nawabi. The professor never wanted to make the language easy to master. I wanted it to be a challenge, Grammar says, but not impossible. And so people have been able to write. 9. Cameron enlisted a botanist to consult on the production. Grace. Played by Please Sigourney don't get up. Weaver, is a botanist who is trying to unravel the mysteries of Pandora's wildly exotic and very plant-like. 
Cameron has Jody Holt, a professor in the Department of Botany and Plant Sciences at the University of California, Riverside, to advise Weaver not only on what a botanist who goes out in the field would carry, but how she would collect samples and even what she would wear. Holt also gave the film some scientific props, suggesting that Cameron use signal transduction to explain how Pandora's plants communicate. It's a very credible process that explains how organisms have communication among cells or from cells over long distances, Holt says. We know enough about it to say it could work, and it could explain what's in the movie, and after production was completed, Holt was asked to come up with botanical descriptions for the plants on Pandora, which appear not only in the Pandalapedia on the Blu-ray, but also in the Avatar game. Come on, Batkin. Come on. Editing of Avatar happened as the movie was being there filmed. How do we cut together go. a film that will eventually be almost entirely virtual but is like derived a from the live action performances? Our oh. department was involved is the very Avatar early safe? on in kind of yeah, a pre-post-production process where we would edit the performances, says editor John Rafua. He and fellow editor Stephen Rivkin looked at all the live action footage shot on the volume and edited the various takes together into what they called a performance edit. We cut in different takes derived from four reference cameras that were a record of what was captured, Rivkin says. It's not necessarily the angles that will be in the film or the cut points. But we have to start somewhere to see if we have the performance we want. The editors use a complex color-coded system to keep track of where the shot came from. When Cameron would sign off on those performances, the files were sent to Weta, which would play them back sometimes months later to create the virtual shots that made the film. The future is the weapons in Avatar were props, but just barely. The weapons the invading marines carried in Avatar could have been your typical military machine or directed from the top of the amplitude is true enough of that. Jim wants to give the actors stuff to work with Seth <laughs> Long Rosengrant of Legacy Effects, which built the weapons for the film. Weta has done a lot of the concept work of nice the gun, you, and various ah. other tasks were made to the boat. If you didn't know, you would think they were real. The weapons even have realistic looking heft and details. This grenade is not just the shape of something that is viable, Rosengrant says. It's weight, the tactility of the different materials. It's got a certain sheet on the outside. It feels like a real product with a real spin called? and real graphics. This Judge is Sully. a testament to how thorough Jim is and how thorough Weta is at execution. Everything was thought out quite thoroughly during this movie. Every detail. 